okay so in the previous lecture we have seen what benefits you will get once you added structure to your spa and we have also seen why we are choosing data set and data frames over rdd but let's discuss what are the different scenarios where rdd is more preferable as well as we will compare the data frame and data sets and their benefits as well so without further ado let's get into it okay so in the previous lecture we have seen all about different structured apis provided by apache spark and why adding a structure to your data set can optimize your workloads and other numerous benefits that we have discussed in the last lecture so in this lecture let's discuss about the data frame the comparison between the data frame and data set and where you have to choose data frame over data set and vice versa and also we will see some scenarios where rdds might be preferable and also we are going to discuss in detail about the spark sql engine and how it works so that topic is very important for your interview as well which covers like the project tungsten and the catalyst optimizer and how they work together to provide the efficient workflow so without further any ado let's get started so our first topic is the data frame versus the data sets so by now you might be wondering why there are two types of similar kind of structured apis why is spark providing these two apis so in many cases either we work but depending upon the language which you are working with there are some situations where one would be preferable over the other so that we are going to discuss so the first scenario is if you want to tell spark what to do and how to do it then use the data frame over the data set hands down the next scenario would be if you want the rich semantics a very high level abstraction then on that scenario as well you have to use data frame over the data sets but if you want a very strict compile time and don't mind to create multiple case classes for a specific data set then you can use the data sets the next one is so if you are processing like very high level expressions you are using the filters or maps or any aggregation function or you have to apply some sql queries or some columnar access or any other relational operators on structured or semi structured data then you should use data frames or data sets either will work so if your main focus is to use like sql like queries on top of your data then hands down you should use data frame over data sets any day but if you want to take like the advantage of the tungsten's efficiency realization then you have to use the data sets so what is project tungsten that we are going to see in the next topic the next scenario is if you want the unification as well as the code optimization and a very simplified api then you have to use data frames and also if you talk about the languages if you are using r or python then using the data frames will give you more control and also if you want like the speed and efficiency then the, in that case also data frames will win so these are some of the scenarios where you want to use either the data frame or the data set and at the last that as you can see in this figure if you want like error caught during the compilation rather than at the run time then you have to choose the appropriate api as given in this figure so these are the two types of errors like syntax errors and analysis errors and how they are comparing data frames and data sets of where you want errors to be caught this is how you should choose between data frames and the data set but what about rdds you may be thinking like are rdds dead or they are deprecated the simple answer is no the rdd api is still continue to be supported and although all the future development work which is going on in the apache spark will continue to have the data frame interface and the semantics rather than using the rdds but there are some scenarios where you should prefer rdds over data frames and data set as well so what are the scenarios so there are some questions that you have to ask yourself the first one is if you are using a third party package that's written using the rdds then that case rdds are more preferable also if you can just forget about the optimization part and a very efficient space utilization and the performance benefit available from the other two apis like which are data frame and data set then you can definitely choose rdds and if you like want to precisely instruct how spark how to do a query then in that case as well you can choose rdd over these two apis and you can also very seamlessly move between data frames or data set and rdds at your will using a simple api method call which is df.rdd 
but it is like a very inefficient task so you should avoid that unless necessary so after all data frames and data sets are built on top of rdds and they got decompose to compact rdd code using a whole stage code generator which we are going to see in the next section but finally like our previous lectures provided some intuition on how structured apis in spark enables developer to use it a very easy and friendly apis to do some simple sql queries on top of structured data so that is the reason everyone is moving from rdd to data frames or data sets and the process of building this efficient queries and also generating a very compact code is the job of spark sql engine so that will be our next topic where we will discuss about spark sql engine and how it works so at the very programmatic level spark sql will allow us to issue ansi sql queries on the structured data so by the time spark sql has evolved into a very substantial engine upon which many high level structured functionalities have been built so apart from allowing you to issue sql like queries spark sql engine will do several things so let's talk about them one by one the first thing it will do is it unifies different spark components and permit abstraction to the data frames in different languages like java scala python r which will simplify working with the structured data then it is it can also very easily connect to the apache hive meta store and tables so you can directly work on the data which is stored in hive so if you have hadoop cluster in your organization you can easily integrate it with apache spark and the very best benefit I have noticed that it reads and writes structured data with different file formats so you can work with a json file or csv file you can also work with avro parke text oac etc etc and it converts data into temporary tables so what are temporary tables that definitely we are going to see in upcoming lectures it also offers a very interactive sql shell for very quick data exploration and also provides the bridge to external tools via the jdbc odbc connectors what what is behind that efficient tool is its underlying engine so as you can see in this figure this is the spark sql engine which we are going to discuss in detail so at the core of this spark sql engine is the catalyst optimizer and the project tungsten so together they will support a very high level data frame and data set apis and also the sql queries so as you can see in this figure we have the spark sql which is built on top of catalyst optimizer and the tungsten and they have several functionalities so you can work with hive tables or else you, there are different data formats as given here like avro parke or rc json and also you can write your spark application as well as for quicker analysis you can just use the spark sql shell and through jdbc odbc connector you can integrate spark sql with different technologies like talent snowflake tableau etc etc so this is very important thing but let's take a deep dive and understand what is catalyst optimizer so this catalyst optimizer is nothing but will take the computational query and converts it into a efficient execution plan and it goes through different transformation as given here the first phase will be the analysis then we have the logical optimization then the physical planning and code generation so these are the stages in catalyst optimizer so first one is analysis so spark sql engine will begin by generating a abstract syntax tree for every sql or data frame query so in this initial phase any column or table names will be resolved by consulting an internal catalog so once a programmatic interface for spark sql which holds a different list of names and columns as well as their data types etc then once they have all been successfully resolved the query will be proceeding to the next phase so analysis is all about generating a abstract syntax tree for your query the next stage is logical optimization so it basically comprises of two stages so applying a standard rule based optimization the catalyst optimizer will first construct a set of multiple plans and then use the cost based optimizer which is also known as cbo and it will assign the cost to each plan so these plans are again laid out 
as an operation tree and it will include for example like the process of constant folding and the logical plan is in the input into the physical planning. So that is the part of the logical optimization. Then in physical planning, Spark SQL will generate an optimal physical plan for the selected logical plan. So using this physical operators that match those available Spark execution engine. And the last phase is code generation. So the final phase of this query optimization will involve like generating a very efficient Java bytecode for running on each machine. So because Spark SQL will operate on data sets loaded in memory. So in memory means in the random access memory, Spark can use a great compiler technology for this code generation process for speeding up your execution. So in other words, it acts as a compiler and project tungsten, which facilitates this whole stage code generation plays the main role here. So these four phases runs behind the scene of Catalyst Optimizer and the project tungsten to complete your Spark SQL execution. And it will do that in a more efficient manner. So in this lecture, we have talked about the data frame versus data set and which one you should choose. And where are the scenarios where you can use RDD over these two APIs. And also we have seen the Spark SQL and its underlying engine and talk a little bit about Catalyst Optimizer. So now you are ready and your basics are totally cleared. So if you have listened to these lectures carefully, then you are good to start coding and building your PySpark application. But before that, you should have some basic knowledge of Python programming. I hope you like this lecture. So please subscribe to our channel and also ring the notification bell to get the latest updates. And don't forget to follow us on our social media, which I have linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.